Hi there boys and girls, Brucey here. How are you all doing out there? I am back with another Ask Brucey, and this time the question was, what was your amp journey? I guess it should be, what is your amp journey? Because it's not technically over, although it's getting to the, the end. I'm pretty sure I know what I want and what I like. Really interesting question. So if you'll divulge me and it might be of interest to you, I will take you on my amp journey. The very, very first amp I got, I got around the age of 14 and it was a Marshall vowel state. And I think the number was 8080. It was a little 30 watt valve state amplifier. And it was a choice between that and a red knobbed fender. I was just at that age, remember this is, well, it was the eighties. And my heroes, Vi, Satriani, I made them all Marshalls users. So even though I think in the shop, I preferred the fender, don't tell anyone. I, I bought the Marshall because of the branding. That's how it works, isn't it guys? Ultimately at that age. But you know, it had that Marshall sound. And I'll never forget the first time we uh, the band I was playing at the time, you know, we were little school band guys, you know, teenage guys thrashing away. We got to practice at school and I got to turn that amplifier up relatively loud and I could feel the air moving and it was like, wow, and it was only a little one by 12, but you know, to a teenage boy, it was the coolest thing ever. And you know, I was hooked, not that I wasn't already hooked on the guitar at that point, but I was mega hooked on amplifiers. I had that amp for a couple of years and I wanted to then kind of upgrade and the advice I've given on this channel and the advice I used to follow up more when I was younger was you know to maybe save up a lot and buy something which will stand you through many 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 years. I did a lot of arming and ahhing and this is pre-internet of course this is just reading reviews from guitar magazines and advice from guys in the shops. I ended up going with a JMP1 rack system. So the Marshall JMP1 amplifier and the Valve State 8008 power amp and an Alesis Quadroverb 2 effects unit and a Marshall 2x12 1936 cabinet. Uh, I saved and I worked and a little bit of a my, my parents and my grandparents chipped in a little bit as well and I bought this um, amplifier and I am pleased to say it was a wise investment because 30 years later it is still here it is still in my rack and I still use it I don't gig with it anymore I still use it here in the studio the cabinet has gone uh, I replaced that with a custom Zilla cabinet just because it was smaller and a bit lighter I had the other cabinet sitting around for sentimental re reasons and I thought no I, I you know sometimes sentimentality and weight and packaging and when you're moving house and everything you need to put that aside I'm so glad that I made that decision and that was my amp for at least 12 13 years I dabbled with a few other little amps from time to time I actually bought another Marshall valve state just as a little portable amp to take to rehearsals wanted a valve amp so I jumped straight into a Marshall TSL 60 head uh, all valve amp and that was I know it gets a lot of bad press online but I, I really really like that amp uh, it was just slightly impractical because at the, that point in time I hadn't really fully appreciated as well you know gigging loudness at gigging and the way that the gigging world was changing you know it's it's you need smaller smaller amps now monitoring is so much better you don't need to be blasting <laughs> a valve amp you know at that level in a small venue is just in my opinion slightly pointless could never really get it to sing the way you wanted to because it was just too loud for most environments but I kept that for many many years I probably had that for 10 years still taking out the JMP1 I then upgraded although I still kept the uh, valve state part of it to the TL34 50 wall aside mono block power amp oh my god was that thing amazing but oh my freaking god was that thing heavy it's possibly one of the heaviest things i have ever had to pick up in my life and i have no idea for a couple of years i think about three years i used to gig with that in a rack with a jmp1 uh, a tc electronics uh, g major at that point became my effects unit and something else in there i think it was an analysis compressor just for the lights it didn't i didn't use the compressor part i just had the lights on because you know crazy days it was a two-man lift but I remember a lot of times having to lift it in and out of my I have no idea how I did that when I came to sell that power block 
Oh God, what a pain in the ass that was because it was just so freaking heavy, but it sounded great. But again, you couldn't really ever drive it uh, to its full kind of capacity. It was a, a real shame. Uh, so that went the way. And then I went through a big amp period of trying lots and lots of different amps. I had amps from Tech 21, uh, the Trademark 30, which was a great little amp. I had the Trademark 60, which, again, which is a great amp, but I could never really... I, I kind of want to try it again. I feel like I need to give it... I should have given it a second chance. I believe... I think because I was trying to amp channel, um, channel switch at the time, and the crunch side didn't really work, but the clean was really, really good. And I probably should have just used more overdrive pedals with it. That would have been the problem. So I might try and pick one of those up again. I had a Marshall DSL. I had, I went through the Black Stars, the TE uh, HD5, the HD20, the HD40, uh, the Ignator, the Ignator Tweaker. I tried some Cornfords, the Cornford Roadhouse. I still have my Roadhouse 50 amp and then Around that time as well, I picked up the Blues Junior 3. And if you've watched this channel, and possibly this is one of the reasons why you're watching this video, the Blues Junior 3 has been my staple now for a number of years. It's just a great little amp. I upgraded to the custom, the 68 Custom Deluxe Reverb, which possibly is the best amp I've ever owned, but it was just the, the, the noise and the hiss I couldn't get around when recording. It just drove me insane. And I know it's a feature set and I know there's a lot online you can read about this, but it just, I just, no, it just, I sold it. I picked, I've got as well, I've got a Marshall uh, DSL 40 combo, which is again is great and I love the sound of that. But these are mostly just for, for messing around in the studio. Now I'm gigging as, again, if you've come to this channel watching, I'm gigging now with a Helix and have been now for about a year well happy we're not going to have a, this argument here i might have the argument on another video but to all intents and purposes for the ease of setup for the ease of getting the great mix for 99 percent of the audience who don't give a flying shit about <laughs> your sound they're just there to have a good time it makes my life so much easier it makes the sound guy's life easier it sounds pretty good and we get away with it and it's fine and i'm not lugging an amp around that is pretty much my amp journey where am I going? Well, I am hankering after one amp. A student of mine has a lovely Fender Princeton reverb and every time I give him a lesson, I go around there, I fall in love with that amp. So maybe sometime in the future, that might be something that might be coming my way. I do feel that the journey is kind of over. I am happy with the, the couple of amps that I have now. I use them on recording. I don't really use them live. I might throw, oh, I forgot about the Boss Katana. Oh. Yeah, I had the Boss Katana. I don't have it anymore. Make of that what you will. I'm pretty happy. I think modeling is becoming the future. We can go on for the rest of our lives arguing. But at the end of the day, I'm here to do a job. And my job is to play guitar and record guitar. So you guys who want to have an argument about it, have an argument about it. But I'm going to get on and make music. That's, that's the simplest way I see it. I've got to perform music. I've got to record music. I'm going to write music. And... This is a tool which enables me to get it done. Maybe, you know, I, I love the sound of my amp and I still use that, as I said, when recording or when doing certain things. But at the end of the day, don't kid yourselves that the majority of the, the population care. <laughs> they can't even tell the difference sometimes between a bass guitar and a, an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar. You know, the population don't care. I've just kind of stopped caring. You know, as long as it sounds good to me and it creates what I need to create and people are happy. That's the only thing that matters for me, my clients being happy with the result. And if that means a valve amp, then I'll use a valve amp. If they don't know the difference and they just want a really good guitar part and then they go, oh, that guitar part's excellent, then my job is done. There we go, I got into a little bit of a rant there, but that is, that is my amp journey. I hope you found that useful. Would love to hear about your amp journeys. Anyway, most importantly, take care of yourselves out there. I've been Brucey, and I will catch you later.